For those in the United States government, the reason for fighting World War II was simple and clear-cut, to defeat the forces of fascism. As they saw it, the conflict was a monumental life-and-death struggle between good and evil. But for many, even this rationale was not compelling enough to risk their lives in combat. Indeed, throughout the war, 67% of American servicemen were not volunteers, but draftees. As a result, one of the primary objectives for commanders was to train not only the soldiers' bodies, but to mold their hearts and minds as well. The task was monumental. At Fort Meade, I was called on to deliver a series of lectures on why there was a war to a thousand troops at a time. It staggered me to find that there was very little enthusiasm for the war and practically no understanding as to why we were in it. The soldiers had, generally speaking, a great admiration for the Germans. I don't believe the lectures helped a whit. To help foment more passionate anti-Axis sentiment, a full-scale propaganda campaign barraged the enlisted man at every turn. Among the most effective of the films used in this effort was the Why We Fight series, produced by famed Hollywood director Frank Capra. In these movies, which were aimed directly at the soldiers, Germans, Italians, and especially Japanese were presented as inhuman demons bent on death and destruction. Take a good, close look at this trio. Remember these faces. Remember them well. Stop thinking and follow me, cried Hitler. I will make you masters of the world. And the people answered, I am, I am. Stop thinking and believe in me, bellowed Mussolini. And I will restore the glory that was wrong. And the people answered, Duce, Duce. Stop thinking and follow your god emperor, cried the Japanese warlords. And Japan will rule the world. And the people answered, Banzai, Banzai. Among soldiers, the propaganda campaign had decidedly mixed results. A young naval trainee from Texas who had recently graduated from Yale wrote about it in a letter to his parents. They hand out so much crude propaganda here. It is really sickening. Stuff like kill the Japs, hate, murder, and a lot of stuff like you are the cream of American youth. Some fellas swallow it all. These are the fellas whom are below average intelligence. Two of my roommates, for example, get a big kick out of hearing it. Maybe it is good. All the well-educated fellas know what they're fighting for, why they are here, and don't need to be brainwashed into anything. The efforts at indoctrination didn't end with films and posters. A young Marine named Stanley Rich recorded a pep talk given to his unit by an officer in basic training. You join this outfit to fight, and I've every confidence in you that you will. Forget about this dying business. You can't live forever. Think instead about killing. Concentrate on squeezing off those shots. Make every round land in one of those little yellow bastards. They kill easy. Sure, we'll get bombed. Sure, we'll get shelled. Sure, it's tough to take it, but I want every goddamn son of a bitch in this outfit to stay in his position and keep thinking, let him come, brother. Let him go. While these efforts may have made an impact on GIs in training, they quickly melted away once the soldiers tasted combat. 